allow me to burn for you. Father, please remove it from my life. Whatever will not allow me to ascend in my journey with you, Father, remove it from my life. Whoever will not allow me to run far with you, Father, remove them from my life. Make that your prayer. Make that your prayer. Set my life on fire. Set my heart on fire. Help me, O oh God, to walk in the Spirit that I fulfill not the works of the flesh. Set my heart on fire. 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 We have gathered tonight to dine with you. Whatever won't allow me to dine worthily, oh God, purge away from me. Set me on fire. Purify me with your fire. Purify me with your blood. Lord, I've come to partake of this meal, this life-transforming meal. Oh God, purge me. Don't let me dine casually. 
Don't let me dine unworthily. Don't let me dine sinfully. Don't let me dine in an unclean manner. Oh God, purge me. Purify me. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. One more prayer before we take our seats. This season we have been looking at wisdom. The scripture says wisdom is profitable to direct. There's a step you need to take to get to the next level of life. Without that step, you can't ascend. Can you pray to God tonight and say, Father, the wisdom to take the right step, please give to me. There's a wisdom that is required. The Bible says through wisdom, you can take an entire city. Through wisdom, you can take your destiny. The Bible says by wisdom, the world, the, the, the Lord founded this world. He built this world on wisdom. That's how important wisdom is. Tell him, Father, there's a wisdom I need. There's a wisdom I need to navigate. There's a wisdom I need, Lord, to ascend. There's a wisdom I need, oh God, to enter the next phase. There's a wisdom I need to consolidate on my victory. There's a wisdom I need to succeed this month. Lord, release your wisdom into my heart. It is written in the scriptures, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask from God. Lift up your voice tonight and say, Father, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. I desire wisdom. Grant me wisdom. Wisdom to excel in 2022. Wisdom to go far this year. Wisdom to go high this year. Wisdom not to fail. Wisdom not to stumble. Wisdom not to fall. Father, give me wisdom, Lord. Grant me wisdom, Lord. Every decision you will take in life must be guided by wisdom. The person you will marry, the job you will do, everything requires wisdom. Tell him, Father, give me wisdom. That business you are operating, there's a wisdom that it requires for the business to expand. Father, give me wisdom. In your place of work, there's a wisdom you will demonstrate that those above you will bow. Father, give me wisdom. Ask him, O God, open, O God, the secret places of heaven and deposit your wisdom upon my life. Are you confused about the next step of life? There's a wisdom that is required that will ensure that your next step is guaranteed to succeed. Tell him, Father, tonight, in your word, let wisdom be revealed. Tell him, oh God, send your word of wisdom to me. My heart is open tonight. Lord, my heart is open. Tell him, Lord, my heart is open. My heart is open. Send your word of wisdom to me. Let wisdom locate me. Let me leave service wiser than I came. Ah, kapashote kapranta kapa. Let me leave service knowing what to do over that situation that has harassed me, that has troubled me, that has tormented me, that has intimidated me. Oh God, tonight, by your word, give me the wisdom to break forth, to break through, to, to rise up. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray eternal rock of ages we thank you you are the God of all wisdom the secret things belong to you but the things that are revealed belong to us and our children tonight reveal secrets to us in the name of Jesus Father, I pray for everyone present and those that will listen online and through any other medium. That Father, open up our hearts, O God. 
Let the hearts of men tonight be easy for the world to penetrate. In the name of Jesus, let your word come like a double-edged sword, sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the bones and marrows. Let it discern the thoughts and intents of our hearts. Give fire to your word. Give us understanding. Let us live better than we came. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We commit the service into your hands. Breathe upon your word and give it life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Before you see, why not just say hello to someone? Good evening. God bless you. If you've not seen someone in a while, it would be good to say hello very well. Pastor Shunom is in the house with his lovely damsel. Praise the Lord. King's Ballad. Always looking for opportunity to knock each other's hands. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You're welcome to church tonight. How many people are in the technical room? Okay, on, this, on the scriptures. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight's meeting will be very, very interesting. Amen. Where you are seated, say, Lord, speak to me. I can't hear you. Say, Lord, speak to me. Say, Holy Spirit, take over. Let me hear what you have for me. Let me not hear what I want to hear in the name of Jesus. You know, a lot of times we actually are listening and we actually are hearing what we want to hear. Have you seen it happen before? You know, sometimes my wife and I will be having a discussion and I'll tell her that what, what she's hearing is what she wants to hear out of the conversation I'm having with her. So I know it is possible for people to talk to each other and what they are hearing is what they have made up their mind to hear. Every other thing they won't hear. But tonight you will hear what God wants you to hear. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. There's so much we have to talk about on wisdom. And while I was looking at my notes, I just realized that we had the rate at which so much to talk about. This is our year of what? Of what? I can't hear you. If you are a member of the church and you've forgotten what this year is. <laughs> ah, a year of greater glory. So the, the, the study on wisdom is just a prelude. It's just like a foundation to build. We still have several things to study about glory and greater glory. So I decided to jumpstart certain things. I know last week we looked at, um, for the last two weeks, we, we had looked at um, carnal wisdom or worldly wisdom or the wisdom of the flesh, you know, and by way of, of catching up, we said that these wisdoms are acquired through study, you know, reading, through experience, through in other words, you, you use, if I will put it, you use your, your, your natural senses, basically, your sense of smell, your sense of sight, you know, and your brain. You use all those things to, to understand and build on worldly wisdom, which in itself is not bad. Amen? But we said that worldly wisdom has limits which it can take us and we said anyone you see that is making tremendous waves no matter how wise or smart that person is guarantee that person has connected with another realm praise the name of the Lord when someone do you think you just sit down and begin to calculate and know how to invent iPad if that is what you think then we've not started Amen. 
No, 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 no. This is beyond just knowing, being smart. These guys get inspiration from certain realms. It's not that they are evil people. Do you understand me? But the fact is there are some inspirations that the natural realm can never provide. You need to connect with the supernatural. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and what we looked at last week, we tried to see the relationship between, we said that that realm, that realm can be, okay, to gain exceptional mastery in worldly wisdom, a boost is needed from either the devilish realm or the realm of God. You need that boost to push your wisdom level to the realm of mastery where you become where you become a master where you become someone that people will refer to you become a real reference point i'm not talking of making first class no it's beyond that there are people who don't make first class who make third class but they become a reference point in the world for you to make impact where your decisions can sway millions of people you understand the kind of thing I'm talking about? Like, like Daniel, which was an example that we gave. Daniel was someone that was that lived in an era where magic was very dominant. Amen? Daniel was someone that lived in a realm of all kinds of superstition and mysticism. Daniel was someone that lived among magicians. These are people that had access to secrets that were hidden from normal people. Yet, Daniel excelled them because he was able to draw secrets from the Most High. When the, the, the king had a dream and called all his magicians to tell him the dream and the interpretation, they had consulted all manners of oracles, but none could speak because God deliberately kept it secret. And remember what I said last, was it last week I mentioned it or two weeks ago? That the truth is, all these people that dabble with devilish powers, they have access to certain realms where information is available. They don't fabricate these things. They don't. This information is available somewhere. But you see, because God is almighty, God can cover that information. That that is why there are some people that no matter where they go and do divination, I want to pray for someone. The Lord will cover your star. They will never be able to predict what will happen in your life. In the name of Jesus. God covered the dream of Nebuchadnezzar so that the magicians could not understand it. If not, God, they, Daniel would not have had the opportunity to shine. Do you think those magicians were not interpreting dreams before? They were. And when the dreams coming to pass, they were. That's why the king had confidence in them and he called them because they had done it before. But this particular one, God held, shrouded it in darkness so that nobody would be able to understand it. But when Daniel went before God, God revealed it to him. And Daniel came back and told Nebuchadnezzar, he said, he says, there's a revealer of secrets and he has told me what happened and he gave him the dream and that elevated Daniel above every other person the king put Daniel in charge even when that king died others came they couldn't do without Daniel because not because Daniel was a first class student but Daniel had been able to connect his wisdom with the wisdom of heaven and that gave him mastery. That gave, made him superior to everyone. And I challenged every one of us then, and I want to challenge us again. The truth is, once you see that God has done something for one person, hold God to it. He can do it for you. Why? Because the scripture says, God is not a respecter of persons. So he... If God could give Daniel a wisdom that made Daniel superior to everyone, and you have seen it in the scriptures, I expect by now you should be asking God in your prayer closet, Lord, give me superior wisdom that will make everyone I come in contact with to bow to you, not to bow to yourself. 
Not to bow to yourself. Because in this walk, all the glory goes where? Back to him. Praise the name of the Lord. So if there's one prayer you should be praying throughout 2022, Lord, give me superior wisdom. Superior wisdom. Superior wisdom. And our Lord Jesus Christ walked with that kind of wisdom. The Bible records that every time they brought a difficult, there are a lot of times people will bring difficult questions to Jesus Christ just to test him. Some of them will bring questions to implicate him. You know, there are some questions that whether you say yes or no, the answer is trouble. You know, there are some questions like that. Those are the kind of questions that sometimes the Pharisees will throw at him. And if we look at them, it's either yes or no. And then somehow, he will manufacture something that is in between. It's not yes, it's not no, but he answers them. Superior wisdom. Jesus walked in that kind of wisdom. Daniel walked in it. Joseph walked in it. You will walk in it. In the name of Jesus. Don't forget what the scripture says. It says, if any man lacks wisdom, what did he say? Ask. If there's one prayer you must be praying, I found myself praying that prayer often this year, and I see myself walking in realms of wisdom. Amen? If there's one prayer that should not be far from you this year, Lord, give me superior wisdom. The wisdom that people will not be able to understand. In whatever circle you are, whether you are in business, whether you are in employment, whether you are a student, whether you are in politics, whatever, there's a wisdom that makes you outstanding. There's a wisdom that makes you shine. And God has that wisdom in his hands. What God has hidden from many people, God can reveal it to you. I think I shared it here before. Do you know how many times I'll be in my place of work and we are deliberating on an issue? Everybody will just be looking to the left. And something drops in my heart. Boom! It's, it's like, a, like, like I, I literally will hear it. Boom! And I just understand something. I'm, I'm wondering... How come nobody's saying this? What's that? Is it that I'm so intelligent? No. I didn't even make a first class. Don't mind all the noise. Well, I didn't make first class. Let me shock you further. I didn't even make a two-one. Because to so all of you that I'm worrying that are in school saying you must make two-one, don't use me as standard. Then I was not serious. Now I'm serious. Amen? Amen? I didn't even make a two-one. I made a two-two. Two-two is an average result. But I told myself right from time, I knew I'm, I'm by God forbid, I may have made a tutu, but I'm not an average student. Neither am I an average person. Why? Because you have the wisdom of the world available to you. I didn't know then, but now I know. Praise the name of the Lord. So challenge that wisdom in your situation. Don't settle for the ordinary. Don't be in a place and there's something to be done and you have nothing to say. You have no impute to make. They give you an assignment and you, and you don't do it anyhow. Like every other person. Such people cannot walk in divine wisdom. Because the truth is divine wisdom goes with excellence. We'll be looking at that later. But tonight, there's an aspect of wisdom that I want to bring out to us. There's an aspect of wisdom Anyone that will be wise, there are certain steps that he's going to take. And tonight we're going to look at one of them. And it's what I call the principle of separation. The principle of separation. It's still under our wisdom series. The principle of separation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we'll take it from verses 14 to 18. And we're going to read that together. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18. And there's something I want us to revert to. And that is our opening the Bible. From next Tuesday, I'll tell the technical people that they, they will shut down um, the, this, our, our, on our, this Bible, the one from there. They'll shut it down so that when we are doing our Bible studies, I want, I want, to, I want us to 
interrogate ourselves in every every possible ramification in every possible way let's interrogate our mind do you know that anything you fail to walk stops walking you know that you know that whatever you fail to walk stops walking if you park a car and you stop using it <laughs> You just realize, you just try it one day and say, let me just try it. it just, something will just go wrong. Maybe a rat has eaten one wire or something or the battery has run down. Something goes wrong. Even the human body, the medical people will tell you, if you stay inactive for too long, your muscles will relax to the point that you will need therapy to start using them again. Believe me, it's a natural law. So if you also stop going to personally looking for a scripture when i'm at home i use my i try as much as well to use my physical bible it's for convenience that i use this one when i'm coming to church that's why i keep begging you those of you who feel pastor we are in 21st century don't be carrying us back to 16th century and 17th century which one is a uh, bring your paper bible listen to me despite what i'm doing i've already seen it in my life that the amount of scriptures i used to know before I started to reduce. Do you know why? Because of this thing. Read your Bible. When you are coming to church, bring your Bible to church. We're going to start our sword drills now in our Bible study. We'll be opening the, the paper Bible and look for it. You'll be shocked if I'm, if I'm to throw a general question now. When last did some of you open paper Bible and look for a scripture? You'll be amazed how many? It's not that that will make you go to hell. Are we, are we together? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that your brain is falling asleep in that area, which is not good. If I say, let's start now, go to Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, I say, let's take it. You'll be shocked how many of us have missed it and we knew it 10 years ago. Okay, is numbers before Exodus or after Deuteronomy? Some people will be asking. But that's not what we are going to do today. So please, let's go open our Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14. We're going to read up to 18. One, two, go. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now verse 17. Look how it says here. Go on. Want to go? Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord and what touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and let's go to the promise and I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters saith who the Lord almighty the principle of separation. Wisdom is putting your knowledge to work. Anyone that will really walk in wisdom must begin to separate himself from certain kinds of people, certain kinds of places certain kinds of language certain kinds of activities if you don't you know what will happen you not your wisdom will never grow above where it is Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 can somebody please open that for us Proverbs chapter 13 Verse 20. 
Then somebody else should open Proverbs chapter 28, verse 7. Okay, Proverbs 13, verse 20. Look at what the scripture says. What does it say? He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be what? Destroyed. This scripture is so illustrative. What is it telling us? It means you become like the people you move with. Amen? What did I say? You become like the people you move with. You become like the people you move with. In the New Testament, it's put a bit differently. It says, evil communication, what does it do? Corrupts where? Good manners. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You become like the people you spend time with. Listen to me. Man is a spirit. Man is a spirit. We, that we are seeing ourselves physically, we have spirits inside of us. And one of the ways that scientists have tried, have, have tried to, they've tried, they've understood that there's a, a dimension, there's a realm that is not, is not visible to the physical eyes. So they have tried to use different spectrums of light to see if they can see that realm. They've not really been able to see it. But one of the things they've been able to associate with that realm, with the spiritual realm, according to science, I'm speaking science now, is that that realm has something to do with electricity and electromagnetism. That's why you see some people who have had some kind of encounters, one of the things that they will tell you is that it was as if the hair on their body stood. Have you, have you, have you seen someone or have you had that kind of spirit, spirit encounter? It's as if a spirit is around or something and your, your body, the hair on your body will just stand. Have you, has it happened to you before? Or you've heard of someone that said it? Have you tried to put, do static electricity during Hamatan? Put static electricity near your body. What happens to the hair on your body? It stands. You know what? They are, they are trying to relate that Okay, it's like this realm, even though we can't see it, it's real low. And this realm kind of looks something like, it's not like, but it looks, the best way to explain it is electricity, magnetism, or something. Listen to me. If they try to use that to explain, I'll tell you something. Do you know that an item, a metal object that is not magnetic can become magnetic by staying around a magnetic field for long? In physics, they taught, they taught us that you can actually induce magnetism into a non-magnetic object. Why? By staying around it and infusing it, inducting it to electricity, it will change its properties. That is how human beings are. If you hang around people for long, after a while, you begin to manifest their properties. I'm telling you. I'm sure if we search our lives, we have seen it before. There's a particular friend I had when I was in the university. Number one, the guy stammers. Me, I don't stammer. Number two, the guy has the way he speaks because of where he's coming from. Do you know that after a while, I started talking like the guy? I used to tease him before, like play, like play. I started, that teasing became almost part of me. I started talking like the guy. Has it happened to anybody before? Just after a while, you just be talking like somebody else. Have you noticed that sometimes when you see people that hang around some men of God, after a while, they start talking like them. If you ask them, do you know that a lot of times they don't know? But there are some people who deliberately want to mimic people. Those are not the ones we are talking about. Yeah, but genuinely, if you listen to some men of God, their tapes, listen to it over and over again. A time will come, you want to speak, you are speaking like them. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? Because you become who you follow. I'm telling you the truth. He that walks with the wise 
will be wise. If you are always following foolish people, the Bible says the companions of fools shall be what? Destroyed. Why? Because fools, their end is what? Destruction. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 7. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. You know why? Because very soon, he too will become a riotous fellow, a noisemaker, a noisemaker. You need to separate yourself from certain people. There are certain people that their disposition to life, their outlook to life, the way they see life is different from the way you see life. If you don't separate from them, believe me, after a while, you will start seeing life like them. That's the power of association. Very powerful. Very powerful. Tell your neighbor the power of association. The power of association. There's a fellow that I studied in the scripture while I was preparing my message. His name is Esau. This Bible study. What do we know Esau that he did? What is it that we, we remember? When, we, when Esau comes to our mind, what comes to our mind? Eh? No, I don't like all this Agege style. It tell, if you know it, let me see your hand. I was hearing that some answers here. I was hearing here. Yes. What do we associate with Esau? What character? What attitude? What behavior? Yes. Anybody bold enough? Yes. Did he lose it? He sold it. He lost it, but he actually gave it up. In exchange for what? A morsel of porridge. So, with that in our mind, what kind of person do we Esau was. When we hear, if you read the New Testament, the Bible talks about a profane person like Esau. Do you understand? Esau was someone who, if you read the scriptures, he didn't regard spiritual things seriously. Do you understand? He said, what's better, right? I'm dying of hunger. You are saying, I bet give me porridge, let me eat. Do you understand? But you know, I studied the scripture and I found out that that was not just Esau's problem. He had a bigger issue. He had a much bigger issue. Genesis chapter 26, verses 34 to 35. Genesis 26, 34 to 35. Now look at what they said about Esau. Now Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of whom? Bieri, and the, the what? The Hittite. And who? And Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Verse 35, what did the Bible say? Which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and Rebekah. Esau not only was someone that didn't take spiritual things seriously, Esau was moving with the wrong people. If you understand what marriage is, you don't walk up to someone and say, I want to marry you. You will first of all have associated with the person. Amen? And it is by that association that the friendship will now develop. And then I say, I think I would like to spend my life with this person. You know the problem Esau had? Esau was moving with the wrong people. Esau was hanging out. Go to verse 34. Was hanging out with the Hittites. The Hittites were people who didn't have regard for the God. The God of Abraham. The Hittites were warmongers. They were warriors. 
if you go and do read history of the Hittites, they were known as very violent people who, who were into fighting and everything. You may understand. Now, when God was going to give Abraham a place to occupy, you know what God told Abraham? He says, you see these people that are staying in this place? I'm going to give this their land to your children. You know why? He said, because these people are very wicked. He said, but the reason why I won't give them now is that their wickedness is, is in degree. They are still at 50%. By the time they hit 100%, then I will give, I will remove them. In other words, God knew that their wickedness was going to increase. They are very wicked people. So the land they were in rejected them. Those were the people that Esau was hanging around with. The Bible says, the companion of fools shall be what? Destroyed. No wonder after a while, the offshoot, the seed of Esau, after a while, Esau started out as a brother of the covenant. There was a time when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. God told them, eh, eh, you won't take this land though. Don't fight with these people because they belong to their Edomites. Edomites are also the offshoots of, um, of Esau. The red people, red hair. Because of red porridge, red hair. Redness was associated with Esau. But you know that there was a time that the descendants of Esau had degenerated to the point that they became enemies of God. You remember that scripture when it says, when the Bible tells us that four kings came to fight against the children of Israel. You know who those kings were? It said the children of Ammon, Moab, and what? Mount, sorry, three kings, and Mount Seir. Who were the people of Mount Seir? Who do you think they were? They were offshoots of, of Esau. They had joined forces fully with the enemies of God. How did it start? By their father who started following Hittites. And that's how they became God's enemies. Along, look at the people, the Moabites. These were people that were already enemies by their actions. Brethren, there's a power in who you associate with. Be careful. Be careful. One of the things that happened to me when I gave my life to Christ, it was years later when I sat back, I was able to put two and two together and I knew what God was. And I now understood that, oh, this was why the Lord did this. In my neighborhood where I was growing up, as a young man, frankly speaking, I was very influential among my group, among my friends. Very, very influential. I was very bold. I was, able, I was forward, I was doing a lot of things that people wanted to do, so they were copying me. And many of them were not very nice things because I was not born again, really. But you see, when I gave my life to Christ, because I was still in that neighborhood, one of the things that happened was they started ostracizing me. You know what it means to ostracize someone? They started staying away from me. I didn't mind because I was, at that time, I was almost like a madman. I was busy reading Bible. I was busy praying. I was going to church. Anytime they see me and my Bible, I'm going to church. I was up now. Can you have fire? I'm going to church. One day I stumbled across some of my friends. They were talking. And I said, ah, what are you about? As I came there, they just kept quiet. I felt somehow, I felt bad. What's wrong with that? I said, ah, why are you guys behaving like this? Oh, you saying that? I said, you are, you are now a pastor now. You shouldn't hear what we're talking about. If you hear you, it's not good for you. When they said that, I knew that what they were discussing was not good. So they had started feeling that we can't say certain things in front of this guy again. And God sees my heart. I wasn't imposing myself. You must know just the lifestyle. The association. People I started associating, associating with. But I don't know. Maybe God saw something. Maybe God saw something. Because I also went through a very stormy period when people that were looking up to me as someone that was a happening young man 
all of a sudden, your standard starts to drop. You know, that can put some pressure on you. You know, maybe God saw that. But before I could say Jack Robinson, where I was working, they transferred me to Abuja. Poof! Away from those, those group of people. So I was seeing them like maybe once or twice or three times a year. Now I'm growing up in the Lord and I'm beginning to understand that, listen, when you claim to be born again, you must separate yourself from certain people. If not, they will corrupt you. There's no anointing that can contend against it. The scripture says, wherefore, in verse 17 of that second Corinthians chapter 6, it says, wherefore, come out from them. That's the instruction. Come out from them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Then I will be a father to you. Praise the name of the Lord. And you shall be my sons and my daughters. Esau did not only despise his birthright, he kept wrong company and married the wrong women. I thank God for this church. We have a lot of young people. And I can tell you firsthand, one of the biggest grievances you can face in life is to make the wrong choice in marriage. They tell people that it's better to be single than marry the wrong person. And they say, no, like, I beg it. Let me, when the thing is sweet to you, it's shaggy, I beg, let me just marry, let me just marry. <laughs> Uh, in the few years I've been a minister, believe me, I've seen, I've seen things. I've seen someone who said, I wish I never married this fellow. I'm telling you. I know people who, have, who regret, regret taking the step. But that time when they say, they're slow, cool down, it look as if you don't want them to, to move forward in life. Esau grieved his parents by the choices of the wrong company that he kept. Another example of someone who suffered from wrong company is Samson. Samson. Have you seen that before in your Bible? Someone that was anointed from the womb. If you check the scriptures, apart from Jesus and John the Baptist, I don't think there's, maybe you can check and come back and tell me, but I don't think there's any other person that angel came to announce that you are going to have it, this child, recorded in the Bible. That tells you that Samson was not an ordinary person. He wasn't ordinary. What destroyed Samson? Association. That's what destroyed him association. Tell your neighbor association. Say, mind who you stay with. From the beginning that Samson started having sense, he was, he had the penchant to follow the wrong people. Judges chapter 14. Let's look at verse 1. Because of our time. Judges chapter 14 verse 1. Look at what happened. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And, and he came up and told his father and mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughter of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. The parents begged him. Go to verse 3. Begged him. Begged him. But he did not agree. Uh, not for today, but please pen it down. I won't give Sister Bukola the assignment because she doesn't come back to me again. I'll look for somebody I will give the assignment. Abraham, pen it down. We'll study Samson as a spoiled child. That's what destroyed Samson. Apart from the wrong company, Samson was a spoiled. Look at if I want to marry this girl. Oh, Samson, please now. Oh, please. No, no. <laughs> it's not everything your child wants you give. Amen? If not, the child will grow up with an entitlement mentality that the world was created to serve him. That's what happened to Samson. You know why? Because he was the child that they had waited for for long. 
When they now came, they were dotting around him. Hey, he's crying, oh. Hey, give him milk. Hey, give him chocolate. Hey. I don't want us to. That's not where we are going. I don't know why the spirit is deviating. See, be careful. Be careful. Spoiled Samson. That's part of what destroyed him. But let's jump to verse 10 of that same chapter 14 so that we don't deviate from where we are going. Our time is moving so fast. So his father went down unto the woman and Samson made there a feast. For so used the young men to do. Which young men? The men of Timnath. Who were they? They were what? Philistines. Who was Samson? A Philistine? Who was Samson? A Nazarite. A Jew. An Israelite. But he chose to follow the young men of Timnath. In his mind, the fellow Hebrew people, they didn't have swag like him. There are some of you, all these born again brothers, they don't have swag. And you are looking at brothers who are not born again. Ha! <laughs> because they don't, is it swag you want to marry? Eh? All these born again brothers, they don't even know how to dress. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Nobody came from heaven knowing how to dress. You can teach him how to dress. Is that clear? There are some things that you can't teach. You can't teach someone how to be spiritual. <laughs> he will decide that he wants to be. You can't teach somebody how to. You can't teach. Dress. Buy the shirt for him. I say, this, this kind of shirt your mates wear. When you want to buy shirt next time, buy this kind of shirt. That's how to teach. Eh? Don't say, ah, these ones don't have swag, job. This ones, that's what happened to Samson. He looked at his friends and I said, all these, all these uh, Hebrew boys, they'll be wearing trousers that is big. They don't know that these days, trousers has to be pencil. Like pastor's own, pencil trousers. You know, when you are pastoring young people, you have to look like them. If not, when you are speaking, they'll be looking at your trousers that is big. <laughs> say, What's wrong with pastor? Why is pastor wearing big trousers? They won't listen to the message. But when you look like them, you are okay. As you are talking, they are following you. Let me be telling you why I like to dress like you people. Eh? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So Samson must have looked down on his group of people. And said, ah, this, these people are fake. Come on, let me move with the people who, who know what's happening. That's how he landed in trouble. From there, he saw their sisters. He, he picked one. And that's how problems started. From there, he went again. Tell all these born again sisters that they'll be using scarf to cover everywhere. I beg, I beg, I beg. He went for another one. He went to the valley of Sorek. Eventually, he landed with Delilah. That one removed his eye. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be careful. Say power of association. Am I making sense to someone here? It, it may sound funny, but believe me, many people are losing their destiny by this thing we are talking about. Power of association. The people they move with. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, the truth is, there are some people, apart from the fact that... Um, Not only you don't believe in the same thing, the truth is there are some people that don't even believe in where you are going. What are you, what are you doing with them? You don't believe in where you are going. You don't believe in where you are going. You don't believe in heaven and have you just opposed that this is where heaven and hell is? Have you heard them before? Ah, have you ever said that don't worry when we die? Is it not that heaven? Before they close the gate, who we'll pass? Ah, ah, have you heard it before? We used to say it before now. We said it. I wish it's like that, oh. <laughs> before the gate will close, ah, we'll just pass. He uses the foolish things of this world to 
confound the wise. Amen. There are some people that don't be, they don't be, they don't, their belief system and yours are different. There are some people that believe that if you want to make money, you must do the wrong things. There are some people that believe that, ah, ah, Yahoo is not bad now. I've heard people say, Yahoo, what's wrong with Yahoo? Is it not the same, all these politicians are still stealing our money? I mean, sir, let's just do Yahoo now. Let's, it's the same thing. Even the armed robber on the street, we're all stealing all from, even pastor is stealing church money. I, I beg, we're all in the same thing. God will send all of us to hell. You've not, you've not heard people say, say those kind of things. Uh, you're not going where you are going. You're not heading where you are going. So when you are following someone whose value system is different from your own, you know what's going to happen? Eventually, you start lowering your standard. You start lowering your standard. There's some people that believe that once you see a boy and a girl together, they are sleeping together. So once they see you and someone, ah, they are doing something. So once they are with someone too, the expectation now is that very soon, okay, me too, we'll do something. Such people, stay away from them. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. Watch the people you are rolling with. If you are moving with someone that every time you know that there are some people that they can't make a, they can't speak to you for no, no, how can I say 30 minutes? 30 minutes is too long. For 5 minutes without bringing something erotic, something sex or one thing, one thing. Why, what are you doing with someone that is pressuring your mind? Especially you as a single brother or sister. Why? Why? What are, what are you doing in that environment? Why? By the time you finish talking to them under pressure, they say, God, you know I'm a human being. You cost it. Under pressure. Why? 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 You know, neighbor association. Association. They have a different belief system from yours. Where they are going is not where you are going. You know, there are some people that want to go abroad by all means. And when they get there, they don't care. Their own is that before they come back, they must make it. Do you know that? You've not met them. Ah. The, good thing is, the good thing is that I know that such people are not in King's Palace. Are they here? Are they here? The way you people are answering me, I don't like today's answer. <laughs> Haven't you heard them say, by hook or by, they won't finish it. No, they don't say crook, because crook sounds bad. By hook or by, they just leave it. Any, only you've heard them before. They'll say, any which way but lose. Have you heard them before? Any which way but lose. You've not heard them. When they say, any way is a way. You've, you've heard that one, Sha? Any way now, way now. Any way is not a way, oh. Even scripture says there's a way that cement right unto a man. Eh? But the end thereof are the ways of death. Even the way is not a way now. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Any way is not a way. Amen. Tell your neighbor, be careful who you move with. There are good people who have derailed. Not because they were not, they were bad. But because they were following the wrong company. Praise the name of the Lord. Then another set of people, sometimes it's not that these people around you are bad. Because we've looked at the Delilah, we've looked at the Moabites, the Hittites. Sometimes it's not that these people are bad. There are some people around you that they are not even bad. Because we looked at the extreme, right? But there are some people that are not even bad. But you know what? The truth is there are some people that their timing and relevance in your life has expired. You must move. Amen? They are not bad. 
But what God wants to use them to do, he has finished. And the man of God said something I heard one day. I, I almost freaked out when he said it. I have not forgotten it. He said, never continue to hold on to someone that God has let go of. When God has left someone, you are still holding the person. <laughs> no. There are some people that their relevance in your life has expired. What God wants to use them to do has expired. And they need to move. They are not bad. They just need to move. Example, Abraham and Lot. They are not going in the same direction. Lot was not bad. Lot was not bad. You can't say Lot was bad. No. No. You can argue that Lot was not bad. But where they were going is not the same place. God wanted Abraham alone. There are some people that you don't, God won't do what he wants to do if they are around you. So you need to be spiritual and discern. Amen. Sometimes we are too sentimental. Some of us even know that these people that we are following and that are following us, that they have become a minus in our lives. But sentiments are hanging on. And they are not allowing us to rise. They are not allowing us to fly because they are a weight. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, it says, seeing that we are surrounded with so great a cloud of weaknesses. What did he say? He says, let us lay aside every weight and what? The sin that so easily besets us and let us run with diligence the race that is set before us. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, some of them are weights that you must, you must shed. If not, you can't run properly. You can't. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know that because of our time, I can't, time is gone already and we need to, I'm, I'm going to just, I thought we'll be able to finish this, but we'll just maybe need to put a peg so that we, we break bread. And when we break the bread, your prayer, <laughs> this communion is going to be a powerful word. Lord, separate me from everyone that will not allow me to go high. Let them pack their load. I'm sure that was the kind of prayer that Abraham was praying. That Lord, what's going on? You promised me. You promised me I'm going to my promised land. You promised me that you are taking me to a land flowing with milk and honey. Lord, what's happening? Everything, nothing much is going on. I'm sure he was praying that prayer. Maybe he even took communion. The next day, his headsmen and uh, Lord's headsmen started fighting. Ah, powerful. Abraham said, ah, so this is where the thing is. He said, okay, Lord, you know what? Choose where you want to go. Anywhere you go, I go in the opposite direction. That's what he said. After this communion, everyone that must leave, God will chase them away. In the name of Jesus. Because some people must leave so that you can fly. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know that Paul and Barnabas, when they were going to start their missionary journey, you know they prayed for them together. Say, through a prophetic unction, it came, set Paul and Barnabas aside for the work I had. But a time came in the work of ministry where they had to part their ways. Amen? Uh, and after a while, we started hearing of Paul and Silas. Was Barnabas bad? No. They had dissenting views. Barnabas wanted somebody to go with them. Mark, the person who, who wrote the gospel according to Mark. Is that a bad person? Paul said, no, don't use this month. This is the one I want us to use. He said, no, 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 no. Just, ah, this month, it became a big fight. That small thing became a big fight. And they parted their ways. It means that God said, oh boy, your journey with this man is enough. You head here. You go there. There are some people like that. They are not bad. Please mark what I'm saying. They are not bad. But where God wants you to go to, if they remain with you, you can't get there. You can't. No, we have dealt with the ones that are bad. We are now talking about the ones that are not bad. There are some that are not bad too that must go. It's not only bad that must go. There are some good ones that must go. It's Ultimately, you must get to where God wants you to go. Is that not so? Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Prophet Isaiah and the King Uzziah. We'll look at them in details next week by God's grace. Isaiah was a renowned prophet. But he had a very good friend 
who was a king. Maybe every now and then, king will send for him. Ah, bro, what's up now? See me after administration in the temple. Let's talk. He will enter King Uzziah's temple. Uh, the king's court. They lay lamb, lamb chops. Fasting end. Begin to chop lamb chops and drink some good wine and largesse. And the king said, oh, boy, what happened? I'm, let's stroll now. Huh? Stroll around the palace. Uh, let's go to town. Enter the town with King Uzziah. He was very close to King Uzziah. They were very good friends. But you see, the scripture tells us there's a level Isaiah wanted to get to. He needed to go. As long as Uzziah was with him, he, God knew that, that that level would not be attained. Uzziah was not bad. He had a shortcoming, but he wasn't a bad person. He was a very good king. Yes, he misbehaved here and there once in a while. Yeah? But you can't say he was bad. But where God was taking prophet Isaiah to, he couldn't get there. But when Uzziah died, the comfort of the palace ended. Some kind of times you want to say, ah, man, the lamb chops. And God say, go, go to the mountain and fast for 40 days. Now, no Isaiah to tell him, oh boy, let's uh, largest now. The king's wine was not there. The man could go mountain. Brato pashikata. No more distraction. And the Bible says in chapter 6, verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. He saw glory that he had never seen before. Some of us, what is not allowing us to enter the realm of grace, some associations we are keeping, they must go. Amen? Because this year of greater glory, you must enter there. You must enter there. You must enter there. In the name of Jesus. Rise up to your feet and just begin to pray to the Most High God. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Our time is gone. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And if, if you can't, then just go ahead and pray your understanding. Appreciate God for the word you have heard. There are some people that must live. There are some people that must walk out of your life. There are some people that God must chase away. Go ahead and appreciate the Almighty God. Because this season of wisdom, it dictates that wisdom is profitable to direct. Go ahead and appreciate Him. Marco Zebrandos Kata. Then finally begin to pray and say, Father, it's my season to ascend to greater glory. Anyone on the journey of my life that will not allow me ascend there, Lord, remove them in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Remove them. Remove them. Uproot them. La posha taka branta kapa. Uproot them, oh God. In this journey of greatness. Ah, in this journey of greater glory. Oh God, every obstacle, whether by person or by spirit, le pose pati prata. Lord, root them out. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do you know? Do you know that there are some entities, some spirit beings, that until you check them out of your life, as a single sister, no matter who approaches you, they will never marry you. Do you know that? Do you know that? As a single brother, no matter how nice you are, how fine you are, you can't get married. Some call them spirit husband. Some call them incubus. Some say nasukubus. Whatever name they go by, say spirit wife. But one thing I know is that they are spiritual entities that as long as they are attached to you, that plan of heaven cannot come to pass. Lift up your voice tonight and cry to him and say, Father, any person, any spirit that will not allow me to fulfill destiny, tonight, by the power in the name of Jesus, Lord, check them out of my life. Let them go. I disassociate myself from every association designed to make me fall. I disassociate myself. I scatter that association tonight. In the name of Jesus, every spirit, every power assigned to keep me as a single sister, as a single brother tonight, as I eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, let that covenant be annulled in the name of Jesus. 
As I eat of your flesh, Lord, and drink of the blood of Jesus, every covenant with strange spirits and strange powers, let them scatter forever. In the name of Jesus, La Raba Sheke Skole Prapato Kaprata Kata Shataka Prakatos Kataka Prakasataka Lepakose Pakato Seke Proto Seke Dose Kataka Shataka Pato Kataka Taka La Parapato Sataka Prokosata Father, every power of the enemy that has latched itself to my life, saying I will not be healthy, saying I will remain sick. As I partake of this meal, as I eat of your body that was broken for me, and as I drink of your blood that was poured out for me, oh God, let the power disappear in the name of Jesus. If you are watching online, make sure you partake of this communion service. Get your bread and wine now. Now that as we pray, Whatever power, whatever spirit has held you in captivity, making you sick, making you single, making you poor, this meal of separation, we separate them from your life. In the name of Jesus, La Roba Shanta Kapa, Ibrato Se Paripa Sata Kapo Shata, Shagatakata Kapa Kapra Kapa, Lebrata Takapo Pashata Kapa, La Rapato Se Pati Prato Sataka. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now hear this. There was a particular tribe or a people, blood. After that night, there was a separation. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I want you to trust God that as you eat of his flesh, as you eat of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as you drink of his blood that was poured out for you, every principality, every power, every spiritual wickedness in high places, every power of the enemy that has held you in bondage, as you eat tonight, that bondage is terminated in the name of Jesus. Make that your prayer. Go ahead and pray. Father, tonight, as I partake of this spiritual meal, every bondage in my life, let it expire. Separate me from every Pharaoh. Separate me from every Egyptian. Separate me from every power that says I will not go. That says I will remain poor. That says I will remain barren. That says I will remain single. That says I will remain small. That says I will remain this way. As I die tonight, oh God, as you separated the children of Israel from the land of Pharaoh, oh God, separate me tonight. In the name of Jesus, are you praying? Pray for just two more minutes. Male brako shata kati brapa. Zara ba shegero se prata taka paka. Li prato se fati prata. Lord, let there be a separation by the power of the Holy Ghost tonight. By the blood of God, let there be separation. We overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. Reba shata kadosa pakata. Through the blood tonight, we overcome every power of bondage, every power of limitation, every power of barrenness. Through the blood, we overcome. Through the blood, we overcome. Through the blood, we overcome. La broko seka pato sataka. Shabarata satapa. One more minute. Le prato se pakado baja. Abarata satabaka. E kabasha taka brata sataka papapapa. La brata sataka papapapa. O se pakote kabrata taka. Shabakado satakapa. One more minute. Less than one more minute. Rapato te kabrata kapata. Let there be a separation. Ah, Zoleba Ratasa Taka Pakaka. Oh, Zekedote Kaprata, Sote Kaprata. Shakadi Barata Tatakaba. Tonight, tonight, as I drink of your blood, Lord, through the blood, I get victory. I receive my victory. I subdue them. I overcome them. In the name of Jesus, through the blood. Raboshe Kapata Prata. Shakataka Taka Takaba. Through the blood, we overcome. Through the blood, I overcome. Through the blood, I overcome. Through the blood I overcome. Masob mali pratose pataka protosata. Yataka pakato. Just stretch forth your hands towards this table.
Listen to me. This meal is what the Lord will use to set you free. In the name of Jesus. Jesus told, was it Mary or Martha? He says, if thou can believe, you will see the salvation of the Lord. If you can believe. Stretch forth your hands here and begin to declare. Father, I declare this as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for me. I declare this drink as the blood of Jesus that was poured out for me. Let it lose its physical value. Let it take up its spiritual value. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. As you stretch forth your hands, you are connecting to it. As you stretch forth your hands, you connect. As you stretch forth your hands, you connect. As you stretch forth your hands, you connect. La poche pataka brata. Lord, honor the faith of your children. Transform it to the body and the blood. As this bread will touch their mouth, let it become the body of Jesus that was broken. As this wine will touch their lips, let it become the blood that was poured out. By this meal, oh God, let there be separation both of the physical and of the spiritual dimension. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
God. Every sickness, disease in my life, let that hold be broken as your body was broken for me. Break it today. Every malaise, every sickness, every disease, whether hereditary, whether acquired, whether it is sickness by an arrow of the enemy, break it tonight. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as you drink it in remembrance of me. Once you drink the blood, your prayer is by the power in the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, every power that has resisted me from attaining divine height let that power expire in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the holy spirit go ahead and drink if you can pray in the spirit Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Yes, yes, yes. 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 Every covenant, la posa pakata, contrary to the agenda of heaven that has been moving me in the wrong direction of destiny, I command you to break in the name of Jesus. Rebosha pakato sataka, la branto satako ze pati prato ze pata, shabakata karata zadapaka, le paso pa le prata sataka pa 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 sataka to ze kata. Every spirit, every power, la rapa so ze parata takapa. Holding my hands, Laraba Zego Karaba, loose me now. Loose me now in the name of Jesus. Loose me. Every spirit, every power that has attached itself to my life, saying I will not get married. Ah, you have been identified by the blood, by the blood, by the blood. I overcome you tonight in the name of Jesus. Raposha Takabrata by the blood of the Lamb, for it is written, we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the words of our testimony, every power, every spirit that has denied the people of God from entering their marriage tonight, your assignment is terminated by the blood, 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 Every power that says that people shall not make it, say they will not have money, say they shall not prosper, they shall not get a job. By the power in the blood, we overcome you. By the power in the blood, we overcome you. Raposha Takata. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. One more prayer. Say, Father, every person that won't allow me to get to where you say I'm going, remove them from my way. Now, in the name of Jesus, now, Lord, not tomorrow, now, in the name of Jesus, La there's a place you say I'm going. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That end, that place, oh God, any person.
mercy that will not allow me get to that expected end. Remove them from my way. Let there be disagreement between us. Separate us. Let there be a separation. A separation. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can you raise your hands up, Father? Every chain that the enemy has used to hold the hands of these ones, oh God, denying them from expanding beyond where they are. Every covenant of limitation that has attached to them by the power in the blood, let that chain scatter by fire in the name of Jesus. Every mark upon this one, oh God, that says you are forbidden to be married, that you belong to me. Lord, by the power in the precious blood of Jesus, let that mark be blotted out now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Every mark that says you can't have children here. Father, by the power in the precious blood of Jesus, let that mark be blotted out now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, everyone whose resources, finances has been diverted to a strange place that they are laboring and it looks like they are wasting time. Despite all, they look back and they have nothing to show. Oh God, tonight by the blood, by the blood, let that covenant of emptiness be broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every power emptying the resources of these people. Hear the word of the Lord. By the blood you are defeated tonight. Your assignment is terminated. Everything that has been taken from them legally or illegally, by the blood be restored. 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 Come on, say amen. Say amen. La protosata. By the blood be restored. Something is coming back upon your life. By the blood be restored. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Fratosata kabrekes kutepa. Thank you, Jesus. By the blood be restored. You have suffered loss or losses. By the blood be restored. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name mighty name we pray Amen. our time is gone but I would like us to do something tonight can we have even if it's five minutes of praise while you give your offering and I want you while you are praising God be thanking him is a thanksgiving praise you are thanking him for restoration there's someone that has collected something back so go ahead and let's thank him Before we do that, wait, let's stretch forth our hands to our pastor. Let's pray for him. Let's pray for our pastor. He taught us about separation. You know, men of God at times, they don't associate with people but people want to associate with them. Especially the evil one. I think I remember when I had added in the Lord that the Jew said that he was somewhere in London in a hotel and one woman was calling. Even right in London and he called and I quoted the hotel and the room that daddy was. And daddy said, and I prayed. And she died. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the first day I heard him said, I pray and somebody died. There are some people that need to be separated from the life of our pastor. 
So every power that wants to associate that he doesn't want, let's pray that by fire they will be separated by force. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be a separation from your life, from your ministry, from your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that you don't want, that God doesn't want to come closer to you, that is forcing his way onto you, let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume such person. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a total separation. Let God build his head around you and your entire family. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you dance your way to victory? Come on. I'm going to dance and praise him all. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. What's his name? Say, his name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. I'm born a winner. More than
faithfulness for the separation that you have made tonight in our life against all our enemy against all sickness against all affliction against all sorrow against every rejection thank you Lord thank you Jesus we present this offering unto you as a token and as a sacrifice also. Father, please accept this sacrifice. Please let your word be renowned in our life this month of February in the name of Jesus. We will walk in victory. We will finish this month well. All our blessings in this month will locate us. There will be no carryover for us. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Please accept this and for the furtherance of your work. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and never. Amen. I just, I was just told that today is uh, Brother John Paul's birthday. No one is wearing a new shirt. Please let's pray for him. Praise the Lord. Let's stretch for the hands towards our brother. On the 1st of February is his day. But on this day, God remember you. The Lord remember you. On this day, the Lord separate you. 
unto himself. Separate you away from every power that has warred against you, that has stood against you, that has denied you your rightful allotment from heaven. In the name of Jesus. On this day, I pray for you, a new grace comes upon you. On that is unction, I announce a new power rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, a new power rest upon you. A new power rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. On this auspicious day, when the power of God came down, a new power rest upon you. To do exploits, to do new things, to achieve what you have not been able to achieve before. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. By this time next year, you'll be greater, you'll be bigger, you'll be more than this. In Jesus' name, amen. Where's our cake? Hope you're not using fasting to cover up. We have broken the fast, though.